You can start it uh, whenever you want. Both you and Ed are now uh, unmuted and ready to present, but you go first. Okay, I'm I'm ready, Gus. Uh, you want me to go ahead and uh, kick it off? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, great. Uh, good evening, Teamsters. Uh, welcome to uh, the first of at least two and possibly more uh, teletown halls uh, for uh, Minnesota State employee, uh, university employee, uh, Teamster members. First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and say thank you uh, for your dedicated service to your communities uh, during the unprecedented times we're in uh, dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. The uh, second of uh, these Teletown Hall meetings, if you want to take note, uh, will be uh, conducted on Tuesday, May 7th at 6 p.m. The agenda uh, for tonight's meeting uh, will be uh, as follows. The first presenter will be Sammy Gabriel to discuss uh, the state bargaining, uh, health insurance, and the coalition uh, bargaining around the health insurance. Ed Reynoso, the Joint Council's political coordinator, will discuss the current political landscape. And Gus Frumke, your local union's communications director, will discuss uh, and provide a communications report and discuss the local union's app and how that ties into uh, Local 320's uh, program dealing with uh, the state legislature's ratification of the state contracts. And I want you all to know that you worked hard uh, to bargain your 2019 to 21 contracts. Together, we've negotiated improved wages, uh, benefits, and terms and conditions of employment that you have earned. With today's political landscape, the, Rep the Republican legislators are using public employees once again as a whipping post under the current COVID-19 crisis to attack you as public employees. As always, your local union's priorities remain worker safety and the economic well-being of our Teamster members. We're going to continue this fight, and we're going to continue to do the work that is necessary to ensure that these state contracts are ratified by your state legislature. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over to Sammy Gabriel to discuss the state contract bargaining, and the state health insurance. Thanks, Brian. Well, welcome to all the state employees that we have here with us tonight. New staff, court reporters, court clerks from the 1st and 7th Judicial Districts, and public defender office members. We have two bargaining situations with those members. All employees under the judicial branch, court reporters, court clerks, and public defense negotiate their contracts, ratify them, and then they go to the state court admin for their signature. MUSAF is handled a little bit differently. MUSAF employees work at the seven state colleges, Bemidji, Metro State, St. Cloud, Southwest, Winona, Moorhead, and Mankato. Their contract is negotiated with the state, and then after the group ratifies it, it ultimately goes to a vote of the full legislature. There are 10 unions that represent state of Minnesota employees including the two big ones, AFSCME and MAPE. All of those contracts are bundled together and get ratified by the legislature, usually in one swoop. This year may be different. There's been no time in the history of this process that the full legislature has voted them down. Over the years, there have been individual nuances with passage, but nothing like this. This round, due to the COVID crisis and the uncertainty of the state budget forecast, the GOP is hedging on passing. 545 then. There have been two committee hearings so far in the House, and the vote went straight down party lines. The GOP voted against them. So now, not only is the entire contract for MUSAF in jeopardy, 
but all 50,000 plus state employees insurance is tied together and is also in jeopardy. Every state contract that has, has the same language that they follow the insurance settlement of AFSCME and MAPE which is negotiated by all 10 unions prior to any contract negotiations taking place. The big question is, what happens if they do not pass these contracts? For MUSAF, the entire contract reverts back to what it was as of June 30th, 2019. You will not be required to pay back any monetary gains, but wages and all other economic gains are rolled back to the previous amounts. For all of you, judicial branch and executive branch, insurance would also roll back to what it was June 30th, 2019. This would not only be devastating for many of you, but also incredibly disruptive. The Insurance Coalition put several key programs in place that help our members, and to roll those back, back would not be good. I want to let you know what Teamsters Local 320 has been doing about this. We have put a plan together to engage the membership not only in your groups, but all members of Local 320 to call, email, and text your legislators and tell them how important it is to fully ratify these contracts. Both your Local 320 lobbyist, Gus Fremke, and Teamsters Joint Council 32 Drive Director, Ed Reynoso, have been on the phone and email with legislators to effect change. You will hear from them both shortly. We have been meeting several times a week and holding conference call meetings with the other unions. I want you to hear loud and clear, this is the highest priority for your local now, and no other union is doing this much to engage the membership. We need you to be involved. When the Ways and Means Committee met yesterday and today, Myron Franz, Minnesota CFO, said if the insurance reverts back, it will be a $30 million hit. That's how much has been saved each year with these changes. You all know and understand your specific plan changes that you had for your health and dental insurance, and to continue those is just as important for us as it is for you. I'll now turn it over to Ed Reynoso, Teamsters Joint Council 32 Political Director, who has called in and, and is with us with video. Ed? Thank you, uh, Sandy and, and Gus and Brian and everybody else involved. Uh, my name is Edward Reynoso. I'm the political director for Teamsters Joint Council 32. Uh, you know, and, and I'm the, one of the lobbyists at the Capitol fighting for for these uh, contracts. You know, historically, this has never been a, a political volleyball as uh, what's happening right now. And and historically, uh, normally what what would happen is towards the end of the session, these contracts would be ratified. There there would be occasionally some. Uh, some GOP members that would raise an eyebrow, and, and historically, it's they, they, there's always a couple of them. But at the end of the day, uh, calmer heads prevailed, and the respect the, for the fact that these were uh, all negotiated contracts, and um, the process was followed, and there was a, a tentative agreement by all of all the parties involved, both on the management side and on on the union side. Um, but the, the reality is, is for some, the landscape of what the what the capital looks like right now has changed, and in particular, it's the GOP. Um, in the the committee hearings that took place in the House, not one GOP member voted in favor of this. the The good thing about it is we have the majority of labor friendly legislators in the House. And I don't see a problem being able to get this through the House. Our obstacle is the Senate. Uh, it's very concerning that um, last week, Senator Gazelka, which is the Senate Majority Leader, uh, had some very discouraging remarks uh, to a local newspaper with regards to these contracts and is, is almost somewhat saying that uh, it's a different time now. These contracts were negotiated pre-COVID-19, and maybe we need to start looking at these, and the optics of it doesn't look good. I'm paraphrasing, but uh, they're, uh, they're, it, it's very concerning. I, I, my job is to have conversations with these elected officials. I've reached out to um, Kurt Doubt on the House side. He's not returned my call. I'm not his constituent. And we have very few dealings with 
Kurt Doubt because it's he's normally on the opposite side of us on virtually everything, with the exception of maybe one or two things his entire career. Uh, so, um, unfortunately, I, I don't know. I, I sent him a personal text to his cell phone that I got from somebody else. I've left numerous phone calls in his office, and um, it, it doesn't seem to have gotten his attention. So, um, right now, our goal is to try to continue to have conversations with these elected officials. Whether they're GOP or whether they're, they're DFL, we need to have those conversations. And I can tell you, as a lobbyist, we... we we're dealing with something a little differently because when we're at the Capitol, you can normally track somebody down if they're not in their office. You go to a committee meeting, uh, you do different, you, you find different ways to have conversations with these legislators. Well, we can't do that now. Everything's over the phone. Um, there's there's no open meeting, so to speak, where you could pull somebody out of a meeting and have a conversation with them. So it's it the the ability to contact these legislators as a lobbyist is, is somewhat convoluted and difficult. So, but with that being said, with all of our allies, we have pretty quick and easy access to it. It's, it's the ones that, uh, like Kurt Doubts of the world, that uh, we, we have a very difficult time getting a hold of. If you're his constituent, please call him. Uh, let him know that uh, how important this is to us and to your family. Um, but our, our goal is to continue these conversations with both the DFL and the GOP when we can get a hold of them. I did have a conversation with uh, the President of the Senate, uh, Sem uh, Senate President Jeremy Miller. Um, he's non-committal, and I think as long as the Majority Leader in the Senate, Gazelka, is, is um, non-committal uh, about what we're going to do with these contracts in the Senate, um, I, I think we're not going to get much out of Jeremy either. One thing that they ha that Jeremy Miller did make very clear is that they want to see what the new forecast is going to be, which is released next Thursday. And uh, I don't understand. I think they want to just see how big the deficit is going to be. I don't think anybody in their right mind thinks that we're going to come in with a surplus. And um, the unfortunate thing is, we got to figure out what their plans are, whether because we're at a $10 billion deficit or a seven or whatever it comes up at, whether they're going to want to try to renegotiate some of the param parameters of these contracts. And the answer for us is no, we've already gone through that process. Uh, the legislature isn't put in, in power to be able to take our tentative agreements and try to pick them apart and decide what's good and what's not good. It's only an up or, up or down vote, and that's never been the process that's been allowed for the legislature to take part of. Uh, so um, with that being said, I think Gus is going to talk about a little bit of uh, some field, some uh, mobilization that we really need. Uh, look, I, I can call, and, and Gus can call, and Brian and Sammy could call till we're blue in the face. But it's only it's this four of us and, and staff and so forth. You as constituents of these legislators, of these elected officials are the ones that really, really need to reach out and, and talk to your coworkers and let them know how critically important right now at this juncture where we are. And it is critically important that they call their legislators, sign up for the app so that we could find it, find a way to better communicate with you. And, and get you pertinent information as it happens. And so uh, with that, uh, this, this is gonna be a big battle. Um, it normally isn't, but I suspect that the GOP may decide to play games with this. In the event they do, we need to call them out and you as their constituents in greater Minnesota, especially because there's more GOP in greater Minnesota than in, in the metro area. But those of you in the, in the greater Minnesota areas need to pick up the phone have have your family members call, your coworkers call. You need to light up these these uh, these uh, switchboards or you, these these uh, voicemails for these legislators. Look, they're checking their voicemail. If you can't call them during the day, call them whenever you can. Leave them a voicemail. No threats. Uh, be cordial, and let them know how important this the passing of this contract is for you and your families. So I will uh, 
turn it over to Gus. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Um, this is Gus Bromke. Uh, for folks that are using their computer or their app uh, for the meeting, you'll be able to see the uh, screen which has our website. Uh, also, this information, every inf all the information available on the website is also available on our app, and I'm going to get into that in just a few minutes. Uh, when Sammy and, and Ed and, and I were discussing the developing situation at the Capitol, and uh, obviously um, we heard that the, uh, the the state fiscal situation was was not going to be good and was going into the red very quickly. Um, the numbers that uh, we're hearing uh, prior to the to the uh, uh, economic forecast uh, next week is anywhere from a, a projected seven to five billion dollar deficit. Um, they are spending all the money that that was in the surplus to 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 supplement uh, COVID COVID nineteen response for the state. Whether it's you know helping veterans, whether it's helping food banks whether it's helping public employees uh, remain employed through this turmoil. Uh, we are going to see some really tough, tough budget numbers next week. So we're bracing for that. But the one thing that we, as, un as, uh, as a union, decided to do was not just to contact our state employee workers who are directly affected, uh, most importantly our MUSEF community, and then, uh, like Sammy mentioned, public defense, state court reporters, and court, uh, state court administration in the 1st and 7th districts. Uh, we are engaging all of our members that we possibly can. And we're doing so by trying to message to folks that a deal's a deal. Uh, we had a deal with the administration. The contract ratification at the legislature was only supposed to be a formality. Like Ed said, we, there's a few, a few uh, GOP legislators, mostly on the House side, that always like to tinker with the state contracts or uh, play games. Uh, but at the end of the day, we've always reached an agreement. We've always had our contracts ratified. A deal's a deal. So we let our members know that uh, we, we sent an action alert by email and push notification on our app on Tuesday. Uh, we reached uh, 1,095 1, members uh, over email and push notification. Uh, and we, we asked members to call their state senators and demand, or not demand, uh, we're being a little diplomatic at this point, we're not demanding anything, but uh, we encouraged our uh, members to let the state senate know that we would like them to ratify our contracts. Um, this first push, we got about 10% of the 1,095 people to email and call. I just want to say that that does not take into account that uh, many people that will not use our system, that will make their own phone call or use their own email. Uh, and not our system, but we want to get that up to about 20, 25 percent when this, when, when, in the next couple of weeks, when, when you know the time, you know, if we don't have any kind of agreement with the Senate in the next couple of weeks, we really got to put the pressure on. Um, so, I, as you can see on our website, and for those of you who are uh, watching this on your your tablets, your computers, your your phones. I'm going to go to, on our website, I'm going to go to the section that says get involved and then there's an action alert to help protect state employee contracts. Uh, please click that. And what, what you can do there is if, you know, for those of you who don't know who your state senator is, you can click to call your state senator. Uh, they'll patch you through directly to your state senator and you can leave them a message or you can email. Uh, right now, we are not, uh, we don't have a, a preference whether you call or email, uh, but I think that's going to change soon and, and we want to get these phone calls. 
because even if you're just leaving a message, I guarantee you that, that either the senator, him or herself, or their legislative assistant is going to have to listen to that message and, uh, and dictate its content. So I think it's very important for people to use, our, use this uh, opportunity. Again, if you already know who your state senator is, you already, have a, a, you already know their email address or their phone number at the state capitol, uh, please use what you're comfortable with. But for folks who don't and folks who have not contacted their state senator yet, please do so. And then the last thing I'm, I'm going to urge everybody, we're trying to move everyone to the app and to the push notification. And I'm going to open up the app store for Apple. Uh, our app is the Teamsters Local 320 app. Uh, you can find it. It's got the, the Teamster symbol with the 320 in the wheel. Um, and then if you go to the Google Play Store, uh, same thing, Teamsters 320 app. Uh, I know the statistics tell us most people have smartphones now. Uh, most people are capable of downloading this app. I would urge you to do so. If, if we do not uh, abuse uh, the push notifications. We only send push notifications when there's important information or developing political information at the legislature. Otherwise, the app is something that you can use to find contracts, to find communications between your business, between you and your business agent, and other pertinent benefit information. So I would just urge everyone to please download the app. That'll be our uh, central uh, communication um, the uh, communication device uh, or application. Uh, we will also continue to use email, but uh, we sure we sure want you to get the app. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to um, Brian, who's going to uh, say a few words, and uh, then we'll open it up for questions and answers. for turning the mic back over. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sammy for, for providing the update. And I want to thank uh, Ed Reynoso and, and Gus uh, for providing, um, you know, a, a picture, a synopsis of the, the uh, political landscape. And, uh, and Gus as well for, uh, for giving a quick, quick tutorial on how uh, members of the Teamsters Local 320 uh, can get involved by joining uh, and signing up and downloading uh, the Local Unions app. Uh, brothers and sisters, before I go ahead and, and turn it over uh, to q and A, I I want to I want to make sure that I, I leave you with this. Together, as I mentioned earlier, we work very hard to negotiate these good contracts. We've also worked very well together to ensure that you've had the benefits that you need during these unprecedented times to protect you and your families and your communities. You are all the frontline workers, whether you are working in, in public defense and moving the justice system and working in the courtrooms or you're a court reporter in the courtroom or you're a court clerk in the courts and in the courthouses, or you're on the campuses of the Minnesota State University systems, you are holding up your end of the bargain. Let's make sure that we don't let the legislators take that away from us, what we've worked hard and what we've negotiated for. With that, this meeting is scheduled to last one hour until 7 p.m. this evening. I know that we're going to have many, many questions, so I'm going to turn it back over to Gus to manage the Q&A. And remember this, please stay safe and stay healthy. Um, I would also, uh, I, I want to make an acknowledgement um, of the uh, local 320 staff with us tonight. Um, you see Eric Skoog, uh, your recording secretary, is with us in person here tonight. And all of the staff that service you out in the field um, are with us via video or phone. So um, you have everybody at your disposal with this highly important issue.
All right, folks. Uh, push star six on your on your on your phone, or push star six on the online keypad. Hello, you're you're on. Uh, well, sorry, I didn't. I thought it was more like a chat. Uh, this is Marcia Anderson from Metropolitan State. I missed the first part, so can you tell us? Um, who are the key contacts in the Senate to contact? My rep is Ryan Winkler. My rep is Ryan Winkler um, in the House um, uh, leadership. So I have a direct link to him. But it, are there people in the Senate that would be better to contact? Yeah, your your so your state senator is is Ron Latz, who's an excellent state senator and friend of the Teamsters. Um, you know, I would actually urge you to con you know to send uh, uh, Gazelka uh, in in the email. You're you're going to have to uh, go to the legislative website, uh, the legislature website. Uh, look up uh, Majority Lead Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka, and fill you got to fill out a form to contact him. Um, but I would do it. I would say, look, look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a citizen, you know, I'm a, I'm a citizen of Minnesota. I'm a, a taxpayer. I'm a state employee, and I'm depending on this contract to pass. Uh, please don't, you know, uh, balance your, balance the books on my back or my colleagues' back. And you know, you can be as, as diplomatic as you want, um, but. I, I would, I would, you know, I would urge you to actually contact uh, Gazelka, even though he's not not your senator. Uh, he's the one. He's he's the one person that has the the most power to to get this contract passed. Thanks. All right. Hey, Rich, how are you doing? Oh, good. <clears throat> I wanted to. Can I can I make a comment now? Yes. Please. Yeah. Well, I'll introduce you. So we have um, our esteemed former uh, trustee of the local and and uh, employee, long, long time employee at Mankato State. Um, not exactly how he was uh, planning on enjoying the last couple months of or the first few months of retirement, but uh, he, Rich, has been involved. Um, with uh, negotiating this contract, with negotiating health insurance changes for many years. Um, he is really the historian of these plans. So, uh, Rich, thank you so much for calling in tonight, and uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say I, my state senator is Nick France, who happens to be uh, very supportive and obviously is going to would vote to approve these contracts. Um, and, and an interesting, the conversation... Um, that he and I had, which I frankly probably didn't do through the system, Brian, I'm sorry about that, is that, um, you know, we have, a, even if we just looked at USAF members, we have enough people represented by senators um, that if they uh, changed their vote and voted for this, um, the majority in the Senate is low enough that it can make a difference. And I, I think he he would back up everything that Brian and Gus and Sammy and Ed said is that people need to contact their senators. Now, it doesn't make a difference whether it's by phone or email, but it does make a difference, and the majority of them don't hear from their constituents. And, um, and, and you know, we, every contact is going to make a difference here. Um, you know, Nick himself certainly, you know, is supportive, and we don't have to worry about him, uh, but I, I appreciated his, in, his input. And... Um, the importance, and I, well, I guess I would say I was on the health insurance coalition team, as was Sammy. Um, the changes that were made, which, yes, there some, were some improvement uh, for members, obviously, but uh, as she had said, it's going to save money to the state if it's implemented. And um, some of the projects that were done uh, to deal with um, catastrophic illnesses, um, that will that will save the state money were included in this last uh, you know tentative agreement, and if it reverts back to what it is to what it was, it's going to cost the state money, and um, 
And I don't think that the Republicans look at that. They're strictly looking at the fact that it's a way to use this opportunity to attack um, our union. And they're not really looking at the fact that it's going to cost more money. And I think we just need to highlight some of those things with them. I, I mean, I would like to think, for example, Jeremy Miller is somebody that if he had enough families from the Winona area um, and, and their friends and neighbors that make those contacts, somebody like him, I think is a possibility, um, you know, we could change. And there's, a, there's several of senators like that. But it's going to take everybody um, taking some ownership and making the contacts. Um, I've been involved uh, also from the standpoint of being uh, a, a county DFL officer. And so, I mean, I'm preaching this stuff all the time, too, but it makes a difference. And the representatives and the senators do pay attention to those contacts. And it's just going to take everybody taking some ownership for it. It can be hard. It can be scary. But actually, uh, sending the email or calling is easier than if you actually go see somebody. Honestly, that's my experience from talking to members. So we need to really make sure that all of our members, all of you out there, do make those contacts, whoever your senators are. Thanks, Rich. Tim? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. We can see you, too. Awesome. A uh, couple of questions. The the 10 unions contracts that are involved in the uh, bill are um, what position or what uh, uh, posture do the other unions have that aren't represented by uh, Local 320? And then... The um, other question is, do any of the uh, community and technical college employees, are they their employees involved in any of the con any of the unions that are in the bill too? Well, the bill is um, it's all state employees, so it includes IFO, um, MSCF, SRSEA, um, you know, with the inclusions of MAPE, AFSCME. Um, MGEC, MNA, MLEA, uh, might be missing one, but it is all of the represented employees at your universities um, and literally every state employee. Um, and your first question, we kind of touched on it when, when um, I saw you earlier today on the other side of the state. Um, how, do other, uh, how do other unions feel about, you know, what are they doing, uh, what are their thoughts about this? Um, you know, it's interesting because some of them, like uh, Ask Me, are really um, sitting back and, and they kind of are saying, you know, well, let's just see what happens. Um, and that's not good enough for us. And, you know, we've been very clear that we need to engage our membership. We are not going to be like that and cower in a corner and hope that somebody does the right thing because it won't happen that way. Um, the MNA, the Minnesota Nurses Association, um, is, is similar to us, not engaging their membership as much. But they are, um, you know, gung ho and said, uh, this is not right. This is, we need to, um, you know, they need to ratify these contracts. We're mad. We need to get this happening. Um, you know, every day something, you know, uh, organizations and unions are, are doing different things there with their members. We're hoping that what we do uh, continues in those other unions, but um, we know for our um, almost 2,000 state employees at a local 320, uh, we alone can make a difference in this. Thank you. Uh, Julie? Hey, can you hear me? It's Julie from USF, Metro State. Um, I missed the, the first little bit, technology issues, of course, but how is this affecting our health insurance? Because I know those things changed as of January 1st, and or is that just the M MOU, you know, the agreement that's going to continue, or is that going to, are we going to, because I know our premiums went up, will that, that just stay the same since that's a statewide thing? Um, no, the insurance would revert what it was a year ago. Um, they, all okay. insurance changes that took effect would not be in effect any longer, and, uh, you know, they're not... They're not doing like a line item veto on these contracts. They're either ratifying them as a whole or they're not ratifying them as a whole. 
So insurance changes would all revert back to a year ago. And, and if you heard Rich Wheeler talk about, you know, there's a couple of programs, especially these ones where um, it talks about catastrophic illnesses, diabetes, um, obesity, um, chronic heart issues. Uh, the, the state insurance coalition, um, you know, part of what we enacted last time and, and you got changed was having um, some programs that, like the diabetes program, you, um, if you're enrolled in that program, you do not have a, a office copay every time you go to the office for that. You're, um, you know, you're taking care of a different way and that we um, know is saving our membership money. Same with the chronic heart issue, same with the obesity program. So all of that would go away and revert back to what it was. And isn't it going to cost more money to revert everyone back to their previous pay and all that human resources payroll work than it's even going to save for the 1% raise we got? I mean, maybe that needs to be clear when they see, oh, everyone's getting this raise. It's not really, it's all that other stuff, and it really isn't that huge to, it's not going to offset all the extra money it's going to cost to go backwards, in my opinion. That, yep, you're right. You're right, and, and that's another point that we've made with them and made it clear. Um, you know, they, they're looking at, we don't have money, how can we save money? Um, it, it's, you know, and how can we, I mean, really a lot of us believe this is a way to forward an agenda against public employees and against unionism. Um, they're using the COVID crisis and trying to, you know, make you pay because of the COVID crisis. But it is a, a true attack on public employment. Hello, Janet. Hi, this is Janet Kruger down in Rochester. I'm yes, a public right. defender, and I am confused about exactly what is impacted by legislative action. Since our contracts are approved by the court administrator, does that mean it's only health insurance that this would impact us about? Or can yes. our whole contract be revoked? No, Janet, in your specific case, your, your, your employment contract, your labor contract is between Teamsters Local 320 and the Board of Public Defense. However, you are a participant uh, in the State Employee Health Insurance Program. And if you look at our, our contract, I, I believe it's Article 21, uh, Section 21.1, uh, uh, it specifically says your health insurance is tied to the legislate uh, to Ask Me Council Five's uh, health insurance plan and legislative approval. So that's that's the situation that uh, you you and your colleagues, uh, folks in the state court administration, are facing. Uh, if these contracts go down in the executive branch, your your health insurance reverts back to uh, the 2019 benefit formula. And, and, the, in, and the, the, the additions and increases that you saw in coverage are going to revert back. It would be helpful if you could send out a summary of just what those changes were. Okay, yes, I can do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, uh, Randy? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Julie. His that's right. Like, this is Julie. I'm, I'm from Minnesota State, Mankato. And I just, I'm just wondering, I, I used the email template that was sent out by our MUSEF uh, president on Wednesday, and I sent it to my senator and my representative. Um, I heard back from my senator, and I'm just wondering, do you encourage people to also call, or do you just do one or the other? Um, you respond to me. If you're, yeah, this is Gus, and if you're, if you have open communication with your state senator right now, I would not urge any additional communication unless they're hemming and hawing, or uh, they provided you something, uh, uh, if they've they've told you something that you uh, that's that's uh, uh, will okay. be contrary to what our message is, uh, then I would urge a, a, another follow up. But if you, you know, if you, like uh, Rich said, he's got uh, senator uh, friends out of uh, Mankato and uh, 
the, the woman from Metro State, I believe her name's Marsha. She has the Senator Latz. Uh, these guys, these these senators, they're with us 100%. Uh, you know, just one touch, one 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 notification, let them know that 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 this is important to their constituents is all you need. Now, if you had Senator Gazelka, just to pick on him, uh, and and he said something back that was vague or you know something anti-public employee, anti-state employee. Uh, I would very much urge you to continue to contact him as it, as uh, you as uh, his constituent uh, in any similar circumstance. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Tracy, you're on. Well, hi. Um, first, I want to thank all of our uh, Teamster Local 320 leadership, Brian, Ed, Sammy, Gus, and Eric, and all the staff for holding this teletown hall. I think it's really important for our members to be able to hear what's going on, and especially because it's so fast moving. So um, I certainly appreciate the time and energy that you're putting into this, and uh, we know that you'll keep us informed as as we need to move forward. And uh, for my members that are on the line, um, know that I will do my best to uh, keep what doing what I'm doing to advocate on our behalf. I had just sent a, another me or a message to Senator Miller, um, who is my senator, um, right before this call started, and, and sent him a private message. So, um, what I would say is for our members who live in border states, so Wisconsin, Iowa, North Dakota, and South Dakota, please contact your senator and representative of the. Um, district that your university is in. I know a lot of times people, especially when we're uh, getting ready for lobby day, we have members who are like, I don't have anyone that I would necessarily rep or be represented by. Um, it's important for them to hear um, even if you work in the district. So um, it's, um, I did send out the template um, that our state legislative chair, Christy Modro, had uh, created. And um, as we need to make further communications, if, if that becomes necessary, I'll ask her to also uh, create some more templates um, as well as encourage people to use the, uh, the app and, and whatnot that Teamsters pushes out. So again, um, I cannot emphasize enough that we need to be able to galvanize all of our folks to take action on this. Um, we have 18 days until the uh, legislature adjourns, and so a lot of work needs to happen there. And I know that Lean, uh, Teamsters is is providing us some really good leadership and representation um, in everything that we're doing. And I'm hearing from some of the other bargaining units, just like what Sammy had said, that it seems kind of sunshine and roses that they're confident that all this will happen and uh, we shouldn't have a problem. Well, I, I'm not believing that. I'm certainly believing our Teamsters leadership that uh, we have a problem and we need to take action. So thanks again. Thanks, Tracy, and, and I think you, that's a great point for our border state employees. Uh, we know that we do have a lot of members on, on each of those borders, and, and good point to call that the university in your, uh, you know, the, your legislators in the district of your university you work in. Thank you, and thank you for your leadership with me, Saf. I You know, I, um, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, we did get a question on the uh, chat box online. And uh, you know, we just want to be clear: these these uh, these um, contracts are not ratified. There's tentative agreements between the two parties who negotiated the the contracts. Uh, in our case, it's it's uh, MUSEF and Teachers Local 320 uh, on one side, and uh, uh, the Minnesota State system on the other. Uh, Minnesota State. The Minnesota State System is an executive level agency, and it does have to go through the legislative approval like AFSCME, MAPE, and all the aforementioned unions that uh, Sammy went through earlier. So these contracts are not ratified. What Gazelka had said in, uh, publicly, he said he wants, uh, he wants us, us, all the unions, to go back and renegotiate a tentative agreement we've already had with the with the administration and MMB, and uh, you know, for those of you who are public defenders, you know we would never go back and renegotiate a tentative agreement. Uh, for those of in, in the court reporters and, and the court clerks, I, I think you'd feel the same way. Uh, we would never do such a thing. So, 
asking the state employees of Minnesota at the executive level to do so is, is just, it's abhorrent and it's anti-union. And a another way to look at it as well is, if there's a state budget surplus, which that happens, and it was going to happen this year, the state has never come back to state employees and said, hey, we got lots of money, we want to renegotiate and give you more. <laughs> that doesn't happen. So it should not happen in reverse. Great point. Uh, we don't see any more uh, questions. Uh, you know, push star six on your phone. Push star six. Uh, put yourself in queue if you're online. Um, uh, again, I, I couldn't urge you uh, to do anything more right now than contact your state senator and download the app. Uh, download the Teamster app, please. Going once. Oh, one one person. Okay, all right. Hello, Ben. You're hey, I was. Yeah, I was just wondering, are you guys going to make this? Uh, um, town hall rec uh, recording available or a link possibly yeah. to it yeah. to share yep. with our members. I know a lot of them might not have been able to get to it at this time with, uh, you know, either work or kids or something like that, but uh, it'd be nice to be able to share out so they can watch and hear from you guys. Yep, this this uh, this is being recorded as we speak, and uh, I will have something out by tomorrow. Anyone else? All right, well with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, again, we appreciate your participation. Uh, we know that uh, you know every minute outside of the regular workday is, is time you're taking away from your family. Um, and so we appreciate you taking the time to spend it with us tonight. Uh, you know that this is vital, important information. And as Gus was just saying, we will have a link to this recording. Um, we had many, many members, and it was a great turnout that we had. Um, we also know that it can, you know, there's people that will want to share it, will want to see the information. If there's questions you have after this, make sure you reach out to somebody, reach out to myself, you know, our, your business agents that represent your groups, Gus, Brian, um, reach out to us. Thank you again. Don't forget our next state employee teletown hall will be Thursday, May 7th at 6 p.m. Um, we'll do an action alert about that as well, and you'll get that information and pass it along. So with that, be well, good night, and see you soon.